We can use the ideal gas law to describe what happens in an air balloon. A hot air balloon is made with a fixed volume, so the volume's fixed. The bottom of the hot air balloon is open to the atmosphere, so gas molecules can flow in and out of the hot air balloon. This means that the pressure within the hot air balloon is kept at one atmosphere, the same as the pressure outside. So unless a hot air balloon goes really, really high, it's going to be at a pressure of one atmosphere. As the gas inside the hot air balloon is heated up, when the flame at the bottom of the hot air balloon is lit, the temperature of the gas increases. And as the temperature increases, but the pressure and volume remain constant, the number of moles of gas inside the hot air balloon decreases. So we actually get a flow of gas molecules out of the hot air balloon and into the surrounding atmosphere. So because there are now less molecules in the hot air balloon, in the air inside the hot air balloon per unit volume than the molecules outside, it's actually got a lower density than the air outside. And it's because of this lower density that it experiences the buoyancy force. So let's have a look at how we can actually calculate the density of the air inside the hot air balloon. So to calculate the density of the air inside the hot air balloon, we need to know two things. First of all, we need to know how many air particles are in the balloon. So this is n, the number of moles, which is just the number of particles divided by something called Avogadro's number, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. We also need to know the mass of each of those air particles. So the air around us in the Earth's atmosphere Approximately 80% of it is made up of nitrogen molecules, which is two nitrogen atoms stuck together. The molar mass of nitrogen is around about 28 grams in a mole. The other 20% of the Earth's atmosphere is mainly made up of oxygen, which are two oxygen molecules stuck together, O2. And the mass of this is around about 32 grams per mole. So on average, if we have one mole of air molecules, they weigh 29 grams. So we now know how much one mole of gas weighs and we know how many moles of gas there are inside our hot air balloon. So the mass of the air inside the balloon is given by the number of moles times the molar mass, which is 29 grams per mole. So now that we've got the mass, the density is just this mass divided by the volume. Okay, so back to our hot air balloon. With our ideal gas law, we've got PV is equal to nRT. And as we've said, the pressure is constant inside and out. The volume of the hot air balloon remains constant and R is a constant, so that's not changing as well. So this is equal to a constant. And as this is constant, we have the number of moles times the temperature is constant. So we can write that as N1 T1 is equal to N2 T2. So if we let N1 T1 be the initial temperature and the initial number of moles, and N2 T2 is when the fire is now on and it's heated up, hot air balloons tend to get to around 100 degrees C, the gas inside. Now what we saw was that the mass of the air inside was equal to the number of moles times the molar mass of the air. And so we have N is equal to the mass over the molar mass of air. So we've got the initial mass of the air over the molar mass of the air. T1 is equal to the final mass of the air over the molar mass of the air, T2. Now the molar mass of air isn't changing, air is still mainly nitrogen and oxygen. So this is a constant and those two cancel out. And finally we have that rho is equal to mass over volume. This is the density and so that tells us that the mass is equal to the density times the volume. So we have here the initial density times the volume of the balloon times T1 is equal to the final density times the volume of the balloon times T2. And the volume of the balloon is not changing, 
So that cancels out between the two sides. So this tells us that the final density, row 2, is equal to row 1 times T1 on T2. So this tells us how the density of the air inside the balloon changes as the air is heated. Now what we're interested in is what's this buoyancy force here? Because we're interested in how this hot air balloon actually flies. So we saw from Archimedes' principle that the buoyancy force is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. So that's the weight of the air outside. So that is the initial temperature of the air. So the weight of air displaced is given by the initial density times V. This is the mass of the air which is displaced. And then to get it into a weight, we need to times it by the acceleration due to gravity, which is little g. So this is our buoyancy force. And so the total force acting on the balloon is equal to the buoyancy force minus the weight force. So this is equal to, now the buoyancy force, that's the row 1 Vg. The weight force, now the weight of the balloon is made up of two things. We've got the weight of the actual balloon itself and we've also got the weight of the air inside the balloon here. So the weight of the air inside is at density row 2. Vg, that's the weight of the air inside, and then we've got the mass of the balloon, the basket, and this envelope, and the gas cylinders, etc. So this is equal to the mass of the balloon times g. And so this is the total force. And for this row 2, we can substitute in from up here. So this is going to go in down there. So we've got row 1 Vg minus row 1 T1 on T2. Vg minus m balloon g. And so finally, we can do row 1 Vg outside of 1 minus T1 on T2, so the initial temperature on the final temperature, minus the mass of the balloon times g. This is equal to the total force acting on the balloon. So if this is positive, the balloon will accelerate upwards. If this is negative, because this weight force is larger, the balloon will accelerate downwards. So just some things to remember with this equation. The temperature is in kelvins. So we can't substitute temperature in degrees C here. We have to convert the temperature to kelvins. The initial density, row 1, is around about 1.2 kilograms per meter cubed. That's the density of the air which is all around us. And most balloons have a volume of around 2,800 meters cubed, just for information. Okay, so this is our equation, which is a very important equation, about the total force felt by a hot air balloon and that explains why the hot air balloon will move up.